wow, it's me. Hi. Uh, welcome to the 2022 Rigged Awards. Probably should find a better name for that. Wow, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna lay down, so I'm gonna start by explaining how this works. Uh, for VOD's sake, for new people's sake, anything. These are my top 10 games and bottom 5 games that I played this year. I try not to include anything that made it into a list in a previous year. Which is why you'll notice an exclusion of, I'm just gonna say, you'll notice an exclusion of Genshin Impact this year. Gotten more into Genshin than I have, pretty much like, ever. Um, and it's not gonna be on this list. Because, um, well, I, I, it's, it's not, it wouldn't be a first time on the list. I did play it a lot this year, but it's trying to keep things limited to things I played for the first time this year. And as to the best of my ability and best of my knowledge, things that I streamed. I don't have to have played the whole game on stream. So if I play, if I streamed it for two hours and played it off stream for 40, that's a valid entry. Um, that being said, these are entirely, we're shiny. These are entirely my opinions. And I, I think at the end of this stream, some of you are going to be, I don't know if Pokemon is, some of you are going to be very surprised. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hell yeah, then. What's its shiny look like? Oh, it's like... Not that different. It's cooler. But it, yeah, no, I agree. Alright. So let's switch on over to here. Uh... Now, before I start, um, I am going to do one thing here, and for this stream, let's see, take a step is going to be disabled, because I still am worried that song is copyright, and I'm not going to sit there for two minutes. Uh, but a good announcement is Dorime and Take a Step, from here on, are automatic. I have no control over them. So the second you activate it, it's gonna pop up on screen. Um. Which, that took some effort. And it's probably a thing I should have done, like, ages ago. Okay. So here's... Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, see? Okay, well now I have to go... Yeah, that did scare the shit out of me. True. I gotta post you in the fucking, uh... Dory May Hall of Fame. Right before the reset, too. But, the layout we're gonna do is two good games and a bad game. So, I guess we'll get started with the first good game. I'm also going to, I have a unique song for each of them, and I'm going to actually play the song before I show the game. That way, people who are, like, really big fans of the game can be like, oh, shit. For the first, for number ten...
It's a game we played last year. It didn't make it on the list. And fully released this year. Across the Obelisk. I still can't get over how much that sounds like two steps from Hell Heart of Courage. We dumped so much fucking time in that game. 202 hours. It would be criminal. It would feel almost illegal for it to not make this list. The updates they've done are incredible. It fully released and they're still doing updates. Which, thank god, I mean, I want to be able to uh, play more stuff. Like, literally five days ago, they, they did a new update announcement in progress update. They're super up to date with their community. You're surprised it's this low? The top 10 were so hard to pick. You have no idea. It was, uh. It was. It was impressive. Uh. Now. The only reason it's this low is because I don't like the roguelike game mode. Now, there's, there's a campaign. The campaign is what we always play. Uh, we take our we take paths, we plot builds, we try cool stuff. You can't really do that in the roguelike. It doesn't... You can, I'm sure, but not to the degree I'd like to be able to. That's why it's number 10. We're not going to spend too much time on this one. Uh, I mean, it's across the obelisk. It's, it's, we've played it an ungodly amount on stream. It's been a great go-to and come back from. Uh, now, num the, this list, by the way, was changing up until two hours ago. I, I was reordering and I was replacing. We are going to spend little bit more time on the next one. So, we have here... something very fantastic. Project Diva. The new Project Diva. I got it two days ago. It's very good. <laughs> It has the making groovy song in it, which has been my profile, my Discord status, for like two years. Um, it's also where I learned that the reason everything is like, yeah, Anthony and Chat, the one who bought it for me, and Billy, who isn't here, who got me the DLC, been loving playing this. It feels great. Love the song selection. Very good. Hope they add a lot more. Like, playing it on PC, it's got mod capacity. Uh, so I can re-enable even Polka, because that's not in here for some reason. Cannot think of why. But I can't think of any universe where this isn't on the list. After having played it. I've, I don't... Three Project Divas now. The first I got before getting books in college, like sophomore year. Uh, and my roommates, Nick and Ethan, who's Baby Devil in chat, uh, and I would play the shit out of it. So it's almost like nostalgic. We are. <laughs> I would never. Not even evil me. It's impossible. Vocaloid is so ingrained into my music taste that I don't even think my exact opposite could hate Vocaloid. Sorry, it's just kind of a banger. I should not have put this song in as the uh, music choice for this game. Now, 
I really, I have almost no complaints about this game. Modding capacity feels great on PC, I can stream it. But any other song it felt right? Probably not. Costume selection is huge. I really just hope they do, uh, for Mega Mix, what they did for Future Tone. Just keep adding songs. I would love to see, you know, the Bad End Night series. That'd be great. It'd at least be nice. We're not, again, this is one we're not going to spend too long on. It's Project Diva. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to move on to our first negative game. Now, our negative games, I don't have the music up for. And there's a good reason for that. Ah, you're back. I want the mood here to be... Kinda more somber, because a lot of these games made this part of the list. So these are the bad games. We're gonna do one, and then we're gonna go back to the good games. But I have a lot more to say about these, because almost every single one of these on here, I liked. But they disappointed me so much that they, uh, they have to get called out for it. It's really weird to say, but the bottom f bottom five this year are, in my opinion, good games. That's that's why this is weird. You'll understand when I show the first game here. Um, Mordhau. I. Really expected to like this game. And for the most part, I do. I think it's a really fun game. I have two major complaints. Three, we'll say. One, and this is probably the worst, we could not find a server with like more than four people besides us. Us being Chris and I. Um, I mean, the combat is great, but the way it's set up is it's you need those more people. The objective maps felt so barren, and every dual server is in that death of a game stage. Where it's 1v1s only. If you interrupt, sorry kid, you're getting banned and reported and banned again. That's that's what that's when you know a game is dying, is when those are all of the like deathmatch servers. It was all of them. Could not find a single server that was not that, and all the objective servers had no one in them. My next complaint, uh, the wave-based survival game mode. I love it in concept, where it's just. It is a game like this, you're surviving as long as you can against hordes of enemies. It does not scale with the number of players. So it was Chris and I versus like a hundred people. And at some point it becomes impossible to deal with, not because of our skill, but because they start ignoring us to go kill our objective. And it's we, between the two of us, trying to survive. We can't sit there and build fortifications and get grenades and dump oil and do all this cool stuff. So with there just being two of us having to defend a moving objective... And not just like, oh, it's like a point that teleports around. It's a guy who's walking around. It's just hard to say you should get this game, and it's easy to look at and go, y you know, the time has passed. Maybe I could see this easily getting rebooted in a second game, because the hype was there at the beginning, you know? And I mean, we played this right after it was in a Humble Bundle. There should have been a lot of players. And there were just like none. 
I think that was all the... That was, that was three. Because it was... Objective face don't exist. All of the dual servers, or, or all the deathmatch servers have become dual servers. And no scaling on the co-op. Unfortunate. But, like I said, it's a fun game. It controls great. It's a little strange. And it takes some getting used to. But it's definitely not... Like... My go-to. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Because we're moving to our next one. Um, Now... This game... Hey, can we not? When me, when I make a music or a video showcasing a game's music and I I leave the Xbox boot up sound in, whatever. Number eight. It's, it's Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This game is a banger in the Borderlands series. I read so many people not liking it. And that blew my mind. It was like the first time in so long where I was like, this is a such a good take on Borderlands. It had fresh gameplay changes. I liked the character customization. I like unlocking character customization for it. I like experimenting with the builds. I like how easy it is to respec. And it's one of the f unironically most funny Borderlands games. That's difficult, because a lot of Borderlands humor had become... They're working on a Redux mod for Wonderlands? Good. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Good. The, the humor in Borderlands had become so... hit... or really bad miss to the point where you're like... You know that scene from Spongebob where that guy puts a spear to his throat, and he goes, not today. It's it's like that. Do you know what I mean? Here, I'm gonna show this. This, this scene. Ignore the makeagift.com, like, watermark. This is what the humor felt like in, like, Borderlands 3. Gameplay was great in Borderlands 3. But that's what the story felt like. The, like, the protagonists were annoying. Uh... The heroes were annoying, and they did some characters dirty in 3. This game, they handled it great. The villain is awesome. They killed off one of the most annoying running gags in the entirety of Borderlands. It was nice. It was a good, happy time. We're going to go to our next game. Game I was super excited for. Haven't beaten it. Haven't gotten very far in the story. But it fucking earned being here. 24 hours in it, basically. Dying Light 2. Huge game. For me. Was so excited for this upgraded my computer to be able to play this. And this is number seven, by the way. So, imagine how uh, intense and ho this list was so hard to make. But the story in this game is great. So far, I should say. This is what I mean. I don't have to have beaten the game. Uh, story's great. Soundtrack, great. Parkour 
took getting used to, but feels really nice. Um, there's so much to like about this game. The weapons are nice. I like the new skill tree. I love the system of being in the dark kills you. Uh, because it makes every situation... You make your own fear in this game. Like, you could choose to have an easy time going around in daylight and ignoring so much. But if you choose to go out of your way, you're making it stressful on yourself in your own way. Based off of how much you've grinded and you genuinely feel that strengthening of yourself. I'm surprised that you can't play two alone. I feel like one was a much scarier game. Um, what is, is something coming through my mic? No, okay. Um, great game. Love the progression. Love that you can feel it progressing. I mean, it's so hard to, like, keep talking about these games because it feels like it's just encapsulated, right? Like, it's Dying Light 2. It's the thing that killed Dead Island and has made it stay dead for ages. It was what Dead Island wishes it was. It's the ultimate zombie game. Because at the same time, it's equally power trip and it's equally terrifying. At the exact same time. Yeah, I could dropkick and thing an enemy that they literally call a nightmare. But I'm probably going to get my ass beat for it immediately after. But I did it. I can kick a zombie off a roof. I can outrun hordes of parkouring zombies. I can sway the balance of power towards two different factions of war criminals. You know? I... The world progresses with you. Yeah, and it has a grappling hook. It does have that. Um, love me a grappling hook. That is such a good point. The glider, we just got that where I'm at in the story. Very good, very fun. Takes a little getting used to, but feels nice. Everything in this game feels tight. I think we move on. To our next game. Which is going to be... In our bottom games, yet again gonna let this song run out because it's it's re really is almost done and to cut it here would feel uh, stupid great game love it try it buy it if you haven't the developers are awesome they'll support the game for probably like 20 more years pretty sure the first one still gets updates okay so after Mord how <laughs> this one hurts uh, just a little bit. Because... It's SCP multiplayer. This, this cuts back to that thing where I said... Hey... I like these games. But my... God is this buggy. We had such awful experiences in this game. It was literally unbeatable because in multiplayer. Because the person who would go to um, the computer would clip through the floor and require us to completely restart the run. Because they couldn't die, and they sure as hell weren't really alive in some sort of perpetual purgatory limbo state. Um, it's a scary game. It's fun. The respawn's nice. I like the difficulty options of being able to respawn at the TVs you save at. Another issue does come in. With old man trapping your belongings in the void, you can easily get softlocked, but that's... They try and handle that with the hole in the wall SCP. Um, which also can kill you. And I get, like, you're not meant to be bad enough to get softlocked if you're playing on hardcore. So that's not my complaint. <laughs> I actually don't have a complaint that the game is too hard because you can respawn. And I love the procs chat. 
I like the radio. I love all the SCPs they've included. I love that they have the lore for them in it. And that's why this is such a disappointing game for me. Is it's so buggy. It's SCP Containment Breach Multiplayer. This is a uh, number four worst game. Because it's so buggy. And I get they're adapting an old ass game. Like, they have every excuse in the world. It's just very disappointing to me. F because it could be so great. Because I'd love to see them take it to where, you know, they get the game stabilized so they can start adding new content. Because this was the OG. And they really, they do update a lot. Um, this even has a, uh, a, a, like, player versus SCP mode, which the original didn't have. Um, and they're really working on it. So maybe next year, this ends up on the higher list of good games. Just for now. For now. It's not here. And this is not to be confused with Secret Lab, by the way. Um... Yeah, it's, um... It's, it's not... It's not the same game. This is the, this is the cooperative one. The other one is, like, the funny stream game where you get, like, 20 people in a lobby. Okay. Back to our positive games. Now, I actually have to go see. Oh, yeah. This game. My gosh, is this surprising. What a... I used to play... So this is a sequel. A little hint. I played the hell out of the first one. But at the, f the first one has nothing. Compared to Chivalry 2, what a good game. Feels fantastic. Is everything Lord Howe expired me? That was your hint that this was on the list. I kept trying so hard not to compare Lord Howe to Chivalry, but now I can. And this, that, this, this game is the real final nail in the coffin of why Lord Howe is where it is. This game was amazing. It's so much more arcadey, which is, like, is not everyone's thing. But it makes the big combat feel great, more, and in this case, it being more accessible kept its player base around. I, I queue up in this game, boom, instantly in a game. And it's not a dual server, because guess what? They have maps for doing that, and they have free-for-all maps, and they have all these weird objectives, and you never know what you're getting into, but you're always going to enjoy it. The addition of being able to throw your weapons feels amazing. I literally, I run, the class I play, I play because I can walk in with a giant axe and chuck it at an archer's forehead and laugh as they crumple because they thought it was funny to shoot people with a bow. When I'm sitting here, risking my life in hand-to-hand -hand combat, beating a man to death because I've also thrown my sword already, and failed to pick up a weapon off the ground. As I'm now diving and dodging and ducking and praying to God that the man in front of me doesn't swing his sword hard enough to kill me in one hit, I then fall to my knees and I punch him in the dick until I stand back up, and then he decapitates me. Except he doesn't, he only cuts my arm off, and I keep punching him. And then he dies, and then I get shot by the same archer I killed a second ago. Phenomenal. Love the objective maps in this game. Love everything about this game. The soundtrack is great. It's great to replace with, like, power metal. Feels amazing. The classes are fun. They're unique. Despite being so similar, they are so different. You get these access to, like, a variety of weapons. All sorts of things. And it updates so much, too. And they're, I, I say so much, it's, it's, their big updates are decently frequent. Like, let's say, 
Okay, well, this one says it when it ends. Okay, well, they have an event going right now. Okay, November 30th, they added a whole new map with an insane, like, continuation of the story. Um, as well as adding a new weapon. They added horses on a map that didn't have access to horses before. New armor, new appearances, new voices. They deserve all of this praise that they're getting. Genuinely, it's such a fun game. It's so funny to play. Love playing it. Um, however, it's this high on the list because we're going to start hitting stuff that was so fucking hard to rank. Like, oh my gosh. I, I can't believe I was even able to rank these things. If you haven't played Chivalry, and you like games about knights, and etc., play it. Play it, buy it, it's probably on sale. Okay. If you didn't expect this next game, you're insane. Probably one of my most played games this year. <laughs> had a great time. Will absolutely go back to it. I'm not done with this game. Clutching number five. It's Guild Wars 2. I had tried this game so much. I tried it three times, but it was on the fourth where I fell in love with this game. The Legend of Gets outgrew me as a player. Uh, the guild leader for our guild in Guild Wars. G guild, 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 guild. The story is genuinely almost as good as Final Fantasy XIV's past the first expansion. It's phenomenal. I love that your character feels so unique to how you play them. And you're taking on these genuinely massive threats and the web of characters grows and grows, and they are almost always getting used. There's one character on the screen who just gets erased from reality because of conflicts with the voice actor. But, I mean, that's not their fault, maybe? I don't really know. But, lovable characters, including your own, and that's such a rare thing in an MMO. Because in an MMO, a lot of the time, you feel like your character is like this predestined hero because it's an MMO. In this shit, I earned my way to that feeling. I crawled through like being a nobody to earning being a somebody. There was no you are the chosen one status. You earned that shit in this game and you feel every step of the way. I max leveled like eight characters in this game from scratch with no like boosting. I love this game. I adore this game. And it is number five. I, I, this is, there was that one year where it was like my favorite MMOs I had played in the year. I had played so many MMOs. That I was able to do a whole ass list of just... I almost spoiled the next game on accident by letting the song run out. Uh, I had a whole ass year where this... Where there's like... And a list just for MMOs. No, this is at the top of the list of my favorite MMOs this year. This is now... My second favorite MMO. It's kind of tied with Final Fantasy. Kind of. Fun Fantasy has a little bit better music. I think that's what really drives it over, is those, like, primals, which this game has, and if I had gotten that far, maybe this would be higher. Um, phenomenal game. It's free. Playing it was a blast. It was the first MMO I had gotten a guild of people, and we would do guild events, and we, would, we had a guild hall, and we were all super proud of it. I think we all burned out a little bit from how much we played it, and that is a sign as to how good of a game this is. The, like, ability system took time getting used to, but once I kind of figured it out and what I liked, 
I loved it. And I think the thing that always kept me away from the game is I would go, you know what I'm going to play? Engineer. It is the only class in the game I can reasonably say I dislike. Of nine classes, it is the only one I can say I dislike. Because each has three subclasses. You do have to max the character out to get there. But a lot of the time, the journey there is fun. Necromancer wasn't. But once it got there, it was a blast. Maybe Engineer's the same way. I just don't have enough boosts. This song, with lyrics, is emotional enough to like make me like tear up slightly because it makes me flash back to the whole story of this game and how fucking good it was. I've done the base game and the first two expansions. I loved every, every second of it. Yeah, Anthony's with me. Base engineer's poopy, but subclasses are great. I just gotta get there. It's hard. I'm not playing Mechanist. Everyone plays Mechanist. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. I also don't like pet classes. Okay. Now we gotta go and dip our toes back into a little pool of negativity after gushing about Guild Wars. This makes me... See, hearing this song, by the way, makes me just want to go reinstall it. Or it's not even uninstalled. Go update it. And play it again. Alright, here we hit a pretty painful one for me, and I think it's, I think it's going to be surprising. This might be one of the most surprising on this list. For Honor, what have they done to this game? What? <laughs> they... I... I genuinely... Cannot... Understand what... They did to this game. Mario Kart 8 is your number one prediction. Interesting. Uh, every class they add to this game has made me hate it more. Because every class has some bullshit move that is so easily spammed, and you go and look up people talking about it, and then there's people like, hey, I think this class could use a bit of tuning. This move is a little easily spammed. And people are like you're just bad you just 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 do just spam dodge until they run out of energy that's not fun I don't care if there is a solution they're not fun to fight and that has become every class they've added the pirate is bullshit chivalry 2 has become my new for honor that I love to play uh I have. Now let me tell you. How many hours do I have in For Honor? 164. And I've been playing it since it's beta. I've only got 12 hours in Chivalry. I like Chivalry more than this game right now. It was so fun. Chris and I would go in and we would dominate. And they reworked my class, which took so much getting used to, and it killed the game for me for a little bit. But I got used to it, and it was fine and dandy until they just randomly start adding in the bullshit. And why add in a pirate? You had like a faction thing going on, and now you're just like, yeah, I don't know, pirate. Like it was fine when they added in like the Chinese characters, because they were a new faction. But you know what they weren't? One you one one class. They weren't one class randomly by themselves. And they some of them were exceptionally annoying with new mechanics that I don't think should have ever been in the game. Let's see here. 
I'm going to run down all the For Honor classes. And I'm going to talk about whether or not um, I think they're just horseshit or not. Ready? So we'll start with the Vanguard classes. Wardens, fine. Raiders, fine. Kensei, fine. Tiandi, mm, kind of fine. Warmongers, are they who I think they are? Warmongers, also fine. Vanguard, decent, yay. Okay, heavies. Conquerors, fucking annoying. Warlords, fine. Shigoki, fine. The Yang Yun, I don't know how you. Zhang Jun, annoying. Black Priors, bullshit. Hitokiri, most overpowered class in the game. Jormungandr, kind of annoying. Less than the other annoying ones. We go into Assassins. By the way, Hitokiri can one shot you. Peacekeepers, fine. Berserker, Berserkers, fine. Orochi, fine. Shinobi, fine. Gladiators, fine. Shaman, a little annoying, minimally. Nusha, fucking annoying. Really annoying. With a new type of counter. We go to our hybrid classes. Lawbringer, based. Valkyrie, fine. Nubushi, fine. Centurion, fine. The Highlander, kind of annoying. Aramusha, fine ish. Shaolin, also kind of annoying. The Jean Hu. I don't. I, I didn't even realize that class of the game. Griffin, bullshit. Kyoshin. Kind of dumb. Pirates. Absolute bullshit. And apparently they added Medjay, which, I don't know, probably stupid. It looks like they're they're building up the pirate uh, faction. I did not know this. This is probably newer. I just... Cannot... Get over... And by the way, every class I just called bullshit is their newest classes. Like, what are they doing? What did I just close? Okay, we're good. Why? I want to like you for honor, but you can't keep doing this to me. And you'll go and look at a tier list, and some of the things I called bullshit, it's like, C tier, because all you have to do is spam dodge. All you have to do is spam dodge counter. All you have to do is this. One specific thing over and over and over and over. I don't want to do that. I want to have an interesting fight where it's not both of us spamming one move, which is what For Honor used to be. Anyways, back to the positive. This one might come as a surprise. It's a pretty more recent one. Neo 2! I was baffled by this game. Because it is so cool. I didn't play a ton of the first one. Elden Ring number one. We'll see. Uh, this game blew me away. What an amazing game. The customization and trying the weapons had me trying them, I think, for an hour and a half before I selected my starting weapons. And you can just find more. But I... I just wanted to keep trying everything. The demon forms kick ass. They feel amazing to pull off. The different kinds of counters are amazing. The different kind of parries to moves. The fact that everything levels up unique of each other. The way they handled spells in this game is phenomenally cool. Um, I love being able to summon dead players to fight them, to kick their ass, to show that they should have stayed dead. I mean, the multiplayer aspect is such a unique take on the game as well. It's so different from the single player while being the exact same levels. When you're in multiplayer, stuff doesn't respawn if both of you die, and one player can revive the other. But you have a limited meter, but the longer the player stays dead, the more that meter drains until that player automatically revives. Then if the meter's empty and both players die, that's it. 
you either get the choice to back out, or you can keep going with reduced what they call glory. Don't really know what glory is, but you know what? The temptation to try and put every fucking level on its own is good enough. The gear crafting, I mean, this is like Monster Hunter Dark Souls. Mission based, go in, get your gear, grind up, become based, playing as Raiden from Metal Gear. Awesome. Love this game. Every, by the way, like, every night I've suggested playing this game to Chris. I'll, like, I'll be like, we should play Neo 2. He's like, ah, we're doing Chris, I'm calling you out. We've got to play more of this game. It's too fun to not play. Fourth best. This list was really hard to make. The complicated nature of this game's combat makes it really, really hard to weeble in and out. Dude, I don't even... I changed this list, literally, I'm not kidding. An hour before the stream, this list changed. Soulstone Survivors was in here at one point. Just to say, hey, I love this new genre of game, and I think this is the peak of it. And it didn't make the list. An hour before stream. I love Neo 2. It's complicated. Taking big breaks from it is really hard. Feels great. Amazing game. However, it is a bit eclipsed by probably my most played single player game this year. Maybe. That that's actually probably contentious. This uh now You're wrong, it's not Dark Tide. This game is fucking good. Don't be confused, this isn't Breath of the Wild. Hyrule Warriors 2. Oh my gosh. Second best Warriors game. By far. So many of the characters are so fun. Love playing Link as a Berserker. Mifa used to be my main until I found how fun playing as Link with a two-handed sword was. So many in characters in this game are awesome. The DLC is great. The story blew my mind that it was good. Because I was like, Breath of the Wild story is just kind of sad. And it, it's not really, like, a crazy story. I mean, it's cool for Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild story is cool for Legend of Zelda. Link loses, and he has to make up for that a hundred years later. And there's some more intricacies to that. But really, that's what it boils down to. This game takes all that shit and goes, what if, what if there were plot twists? Multiple stages in the game. Genuine plot twists. Likeable characters. Enjoyable game. Like, you feel like a badass. I, this is the, I, this is the Warriors game I have come closest to 100%ing. The most gruesome Ganon kill in any Legend of Zelda is in this game. I'm not going to spoil what it is, but I legitimately had to take a video of it to show to people to be like, is this not like fucked up for a Legend of Zelda game? Like, I, I feel like they make these kind of for children sometimes, but not this one. Have you listened to that? Do you hear that with your ears? The soundtrack? Oh my god. It's so good. Soundtrack great. Characters great. Gameplay great. They kept the art style. They nailed moving Breath of the Wild gameplay over. My only complaint before was how annoying apples were to get, which is how you heal in fight. What they do in the DLC? Fix it? Whoa! Seriously, if you have any interest in Breath of the Wild or Warriors games, even if you hate Zelda, Legend of Zelda, who cares? This game's awesome. There was no more satisfying combo than hitting an enemy's weakness, um, freezing them with stasis, doing a full combo to break their stagger meter. Then as they break out of the stasis, they're still in a little bit of staggers. So you keep breaking down their breakdown meter. You 
do an ultimate attack on them, clearing the wave, then you actually ult. And just... You... I felt like a Breath of the Wild speedrunner playing this game, with how I used that Sheikah Slate. Oh, sorry, you're standing in two inches of water? That's doomed you to an eternity of being frozen. Like... Oh, sorry, you're holding a metal weapon? That's actually just mine now. Oh, you're... You're so close to being broken, but I... I, I didn't do it. Bomb. Every character feels so unique. Even their Sheikah Slate moves are unique. This was such an improvement over the first time of Warriors. The only issue I can find with this game... FPS drops in co-op. That's it! I didn't even play it co-op. But it had... I, I mean, I did, like, once. It had FPS drops. But barely. Hyrule Warriors 1 had worse FPS drops. I hope to god they keep this up. Because... Based. Based game. What a phenomenal game. Great cast. I, I, I could talk about this game. Like, if I just had it booted up for hours. Um, I replayed levels. I think the grinding aspect of this game was just right. I loved all the little stories you could learn about characters as you improve them. I love how much more context it gives for actual Breath of the Wild. No character in this game feels like a pushover from the villains trying their damnedest to ruin your day to the heroes and anti-heroes doing their damnedest to save it. And you're cringe if you disagree. I almost just want to let this music ride out again. This might have been my favorite soundtrack of the year. If not for one other game. Which we'll get into later. Doesn't it almost like hurt to go from that to being in here? You know what I mean? Like... This just huge flood of positivity and then rain. Cafe ambience. I'm sitting you down across the table from me as like a general unit of chat. And I'm looking you dead in the eyes and I'm telling you that Halo Infinite's multiplayer was the hardest ball dropped of all time. And I need to clarify. I'm going to make a text box to say it. It's the PvP. Sucks. Do you know why it sucks? Because it is the hardest ball drop of all time. <laughs> like... What the hell was this? You, you're gonna release without co-op, okay? And you're going to tell me that after two months of waiting to hear anything from 343, their update is going to be no balance changes that we needed, pretty much nothing added, no new game modes, and just more monetization, and more monetization, and more monetization at scummy prices. It is such a sign of what has happened to the games industry. And it's gross. Like, what do you e what are you even saying? The campaign to this game? This is what I'm saying is everything is you have to take everything in my bottom five this year with a grain of salt. Because the campaign for this we were losing our minds. It was the some of the most fun I've had all year. But I can't I can't put it in the top ten because of what the multiplayer is in this game. They've just added Forge after almost two years of the game being out, it feels like. It's probably only been one. But they just added Forge, which was supposed to launch with the game or come out like a month later. It's been a year. It took six months extra to get co-op in than they anticipated. But people were glitching it in. Three, I, I stand by. 343 is not a great development studio. 
but they are capable of putting out really solid games. I think Halo Infinite is a really solid game that had its ball dropped a little bit. That's all I can say about it, is, is, is that that's it. This is one of those ones where it's like... How do I say anything positive aside from... The, the non-PVP part is great. But the PVP was done so poorly... That it hurts. It physically... Pains me. And I'm- this is not here to be controversial. These are controversial, I will think would think. But it's not here to be controversial. I just... I thought the multiplayer was fun, and I was excited for them to add more stuff. And they didn't. They just tried to drain people's wallets. And it... It was like a punch in the teeth from these developers. We're gonna whiplash hard. Back. Over here. Two. Our number two game. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our number two top game. Then we're going to come look at our worst game of the year. Then we're going to look at our game of the year. This, I think, surprises a lot of people. Uh, that it's not number one. I've clicked the wrong tab. This was number one. Until I remembered something else I had played this year. Number two. Elden Ring. If we were going off of games that just released this year, this would be the top game. But that is not how these, uh, these awards are done. This is why, this is why they are the rigged awards, is, like, I, this is the game of the year, but it is not the winner of my awards. Um, and I'd like to offer this award to my reformed Jewish rabbi, Bill Clinton. Um, I mean, what an amazing game. It is, arguably, the only good song, you're cringe. You can't say I'm not based for putting this at uh, two, and then say it's the only good Souls game. Uh, this is arguably one of the best masterpieces we'll probably see in gaming, because it was exactly what they promised. Um, it is it is a culmination of so much lessons learned from every Souls game, all of them. From Dark Souls 1, to Dark Souls 2, to Dark Souls 3, to Sekiro, to Bloodborne. This game has elements of all of those and improves them in every conceivable way. The open world map means you don't have to run your face at a wall for 30 minutes to beat a boss. You can just fuck off and try something else. But you know what I never did? Left to go fight something else. I sat until the randomizer. Let's point that one out. The randomizer did change that. Because, um, I'm not walking into a room and fighting Millennia uh, at level 5, which did happen in our ongoing randomizer run. Uh. Yawning! Every. All, like. This is the game that I played probably the most this year. That's what I was saying about high rewards. Is it's contentious that I played it the most. Because I played a bunch of this co-op. So it's hard to gauge whether or not high rewards was my most played single player game. My god, it is good. It is peak game design. And I've seen so many people try and be like, 
Now that a few months have passed, can we all agree Elden Ring was pretty mid? No, you're just trying to be contrarian. This is an objectively good game, even if it's not for you. You can probably acknowledge that it was well made and put together. Uh, it's... it's the way that it is. I mean, I, I can recognize Futurama is a great show. I, it's not for me. That's how I feel like you have to be with this game. There were no microtransactions. There was... it was... the worst this had was performance issues. And for some reason, shut down multiplayer to all other Souls games for, like, until, like, a month ago. I don't even know how that happens. And they just added a free fucking DLC for people who like to PvP. You know how much I would have loved that when I was super into Dark Souls 3? I used to PvP in that game. I used to invade. I thought it was so fun. Met two incredible, like, German guys from that. Still have them added on my friends list. I just realized one of them has an annoying orange and a tuxedo as his profile picture. I've never really realized what that was. But it sure is exactly that. But like... Man. I, I genuinely can't see how people dislike would dislike this game in any capacity. Uh, you tell I me. Mean, I feel like I ranted more about the previous two positions, but I I don't know what else to say. It's Elden Ring. It's the most story a Souls game has had directly in your face. I mean. The soundtrack is easily the best in any Souls game, because it has one, right? Um, it has my favorite boss fight in any Souls game, which is Horaloo. Man says, fuck the bullshit, we're fighting hand to hand. I almost felt bad for having a sword. You gotta respect that. It does have some really annoying bosses. I wish it didn't repeat some of them, because it does take a little bit of the specialness away. Um, when you find the second one. But you know what? I don't care, because the rest of the game more than makes up for anything. Loved it. Loved the game. Kept true to Souls in every way. It only improved. Whiplash. Are you, are you prepared? So who, who all is here right now? Because I need to see how surprised people are. Present, Anthony, you're here. Okay. What if I told you the biggest reveal of this stream is not that Elden Ring is only number two, but that it's not the bottom five. It's the bottom six, because the worst games for me tied. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Origins and Spider-Man. What happened in development with these games? Like, yeah, that one's gonna take explaining. But there's a reason these are ordered the way they are. If you put the first half of Origins with the second half of Spider-Man, you could have the worst game ever made. Uh, Origins has maybe the weakest opening to- yeah, probably really confusing. Origins probably has the weakest opening to a game I have ever played in my life. None of them, I didn't understand what I was doing, why I was doing it, who anyone around me was, and that lasted, I played off stream for like two or three more hours, and I never figured anything out. Stop having lyrics. Ah, you're back. 
You know what? Hang on. We're turning this music on. I have to explain this. He doesn't die until like 30 or 40 minutes in. But your character is already pissed about him dying because they try and do this thing where they jump around the story in all the cutscenes. But all of the gameplay... <coughs> All of the gameplay takes place at the same time, but all the cutscenes were, like, out of order. In such an awful way. It starts... You're, you're at a parade with your son, and you're all happy, and I guess the pharaoh is walking by on an elephant. And you're like, wow, cool, and then, like, it jump cuts. You're killing a guy. And he throws a knife at you, you catch it in a mask, and you put the mask on him, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I can't wait to see why we did that. And then... Boom! Jump cut. You're fighting some big dude in armor. And that's the present? That's where the game starts. That's where the gameplay starts, is you're fighting the big guy in armor. And you're sitting there having this conversation with him, and he's like, Why are you doing this, Medjay? And you're like... I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to kill that previous guy. But you don't know who you are, who he was, who you're fighting. You get out of that, you meet a guy who I can only describe as an NPC, who just sits there and goes, Oh man, we are such good friends, dude. Did you... Hey. Did you know that you and I are good friends, and you used to, like, live here... And you're like, okay, and he's like, hey man, since we're such good friends, go and do everything that needs to be done in the town, and kill this guy that, I mean, you were here to kill him already, and you're like, why? And then after you finish everything, after you kill that guy, so this is probably an hour into gameplay, and it cuts back to your son dying, but you look completely different. I thought I was playing... As someone else. And I was like... I was more... And then it was revealed that I was still me. In the game. And that I was just in a different year. And you're walking with your kid and you go, Haha, I'm gonna throw you off a cliff. Oh, wait, sorry. The Romans are here? I mean, that historically makes sense. But again, it happens with no context. At all. And then they kidnap you and your son and like, let us in this vault. And you're like, no, I don't know how to get in the vault. And they're like, we're going to kill your son if you don't. And you're like, but I don't know how to get in the vault. And as far as I know, he's telling the truth. I don't know. Does he know how to get in the vault? Doesn't matter. Your son tries to stab one of them. And then it cuts back and the guy is like, well, so you, you have to go kill someone else now. Bye. And then you get, like, jumped by level 40s in the raft. <laughs> I've never been more confused by a game's intro. I... The gameplay also felt like doo-doo butt, by the way. Go back and play this one. It's not... It controls so bad. You don't remember any of this? Yeah, I played it, like, not that long ago. That was exactly the intro, by the way. Then, by the way, your character goes, I've got to go to Alexandria. You go, okay, here I go to Alexandria. <laughs> and there's level 40s patrolling the road there, so you have to go off-road. Oh, but wait, all of a sudden, randomly, I did every side quest in the starter town. Uh, all of a sudden, story quest two levels above you. Sorry, go detour into a side quest in a different town. I know you're trying to get revenge for your dead son and all, but who cares? Pacing isn't relevant. And then I got there, and THE incident happened that made me uninstall this game. <laughs> so, I meet up with a person, yeah, and they go, help, help, my husband is trapped, He's he, he sailed across the river, and he hasn't returned. And I go, yeah, I, I mean, I have to get XP, I'll, I don't fucking care, I'll go do it. <laughs> so I go take a boat, 
work my way over there, somehow passing by a boat that also qualifies as an enemy encampment. I guess. Uh, and I find the guy, Anthony knows, surrounded by fucking crocodiles. Except he's on a pillar, like two feet above them. Let me show you something. Let me make a little diagram here. Let me, let me draw you the scene, okay? So here we have the pillar. And we have man one. This is the husband. Okay. And then we'll have me, the player. Except the big difference is I have a fucking spell. Beer. Okay. We're... So we'll say, like, right about there... Is water. On all sides of this pillar. Except for... Right about here. Okay. Can I, can I fill this in? Yeah. Sorry, I like my art to be good. Okay. So there were... Four... Crocodiles. Four crocs. <laughs> okay. Do you see this distance right there? I couldn't hit. This crocodile, I couldn't hit him from this distance because my spear's range, my spear's effective range, is this. This might be generous. We'll use an orange line to know what it probably really was. These crocodiles do shot you with no stagger. So going into the water is not an option. So what do you do? You go over here. And you're standing here now. With your really cool spear. Except you still can't reach the fucking crocodile. What do you do? 
through here? This was when I realized the game sucked. Use bow? Oh, you're right. So let me tell you the, uh, uh, the, 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 the bow's problem, okay? Let me draw the quiver and exactly how many arrows, uh, I had at this point in the game. Okay. So there's one. Two. Three. Okay, I had four arrows. And fun fact, uh, it takes two to kill one. Except there were four. There were no arrows here, and there were no arrows back this way. Meaning my only option was to get back on my boat and sail back to shore and buy more arrows. What the f- This was when I realized the combat felt like awful. In case anyone wants this chart, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll save a picture of it. This was when I realized it sucked. Now, that was a big rant. Just 12 minute rant. On origins. Boy, are we not okay? Can I just Spider-Man? What you might be asking is wrong with Spider-Man, Quentin. It's got the best feeling web slinging, and you love grappling hooks. I sure do. Uh, knowledgeable viewer when I can fucking use it and there aren't 10,000 snipers on every rooftop so now you've taken the thing I enjoyed the most 10,000 IQ You've taken the thing I enjoyed the most, and you've ruined it. You've taken it out of the game. But it's fine, you know? Ah, oh, it's just near the end of the story. It's just, just beat the game. Okay, well now, uh, you've introduced guy- Ooh, gross. You've introduced guys with- Hear me out here. Two swords. Who can only be attacked after missing. You've introduced guys with jetpacks. Uh, who have to be... Um, here, let's, let's elaborate this. These people have to be ulted. These people have to miss... Okay, you have also introduced guys with, um, whips, that's, um, that was the wrong direction, who, you can't be in the air, uh, On top of these assholes, and I'm missing some. I can't even remember. Hang on.
Um, you've got people with swords, just one sword, who do like 2,000 damage. Um, Uh, let's see. Okay. There's, there's, there's enemies I'm not even remembering, dude. So now, by the way, from my cool combat and web slinging game, you've taken the web slinging and you've just deleted that. You've taken the combat that was Kind of fun. You deleted that. What do you have? This was your game. I, I couldn't even finish the fucking story. Because mainly of these assholes. And you would have, like, four of these guys every fight now. Like, two to three of these guys. Oh, I did forget an enemy type. Not stunnable. I'm all for forcing the player to switch up combat, but if you make me ult, have to ult, and you remove 50% of my options, where all of the strongest options are, by the way. What do I do here? How, like, spend 30 minutes a fight? Cry? Yeah. Hence why I quit playing this game. I was loving this game. Uh, and then they did this. So rapidly. Turn it to easy mode. I was so pissed by how bad of just a decision this was. I didn't want to play anymore. Like, at all. I quit caring about the story because of this. I found myself preferring Mary Jane sections to playing as Spider-Man because they were doing this. Anyways, that's my rant on how adding so many annoying enemies can make your game completely unfun. This was by far the longest section, uh, was the bottom game. <clears throat> Who's ready for some positive? No, they were terrible. Uh, you're right. And yet, 
I would still rather the last 30% of the game be one giant Mary, Ga Mary Jane section than what I ended up having to deal with in Spider-Man. Like, I couldn't web-sling anymore. I couldn't jump in combat. I had to ult the, like, flying guys. I had to sit there and wait for the one guys to miss while avoiding the guy just running at me who's not stunnable with webs without, like, a super late upgrade, which I did end up having, while getting two shot. And it was all out of nowhere. It all happened, like, fight after fight after fight. It would just be like, new enemy, new enemy, new enemy, new enemy, game's not fun. Bye. Okay. Anyways. Um, Spider-Man and Origins rant done. <clears throat> All right. I mean, let's hear it. We're at our top positive game. I want to hear your guesses. Yeah, I it's it lets me put games like The Original Thief in there. So let's hear it. Mario Kart 8 from John Cult of the Lamb from Ethan I want to like put these all on record it's not for Sonic 4 <laughs> I'm waiting to hear uh <clears throat> Anthony, what's your what's your guess for top game? No, I said what? Did I say that? I thought I just said that um any of the games on here can be from a different year as long as I played it this year. I guess that's fair. So what's your guess, Anthony? <clears throat> you don't really have a guess? Well, you gotta. I guarantee this is a game that most people probably have forgotten I streamed. Rocket League? I don't think Rocket League has ever made a list or will ever make a list. Well, Catherine, I didn't actually play Catherine this year. Uh, we're going to... This is going to be strange that it was played this year. But I went back and checked, and yes it was. And it was not on last year's awards. The game that I think had the best story of a game I've played this year. Some of the most hype music, incredible soundtrack, amazing fucking characters. Had a fast travel system. I didn't use it because I just wanted to hear the characters shoot the shit together. Great open world. That's right, everybody. It's Final Fantasy XV! Can you believe I played that this year? That was this year! This was like the first game I streamed this year. I played it at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. Literally the first week. Yeah. I told you there's no way you remembered I played this this year. used the music for the 
so many times in, in my D&D campaign that has become, like, iconic. Yeah, the first game I streamed this year was The Weather. What a phenomenal game. All the characters are likable. All the fights are awesome. All the music is good. Gameplay is fantastic. I would have been fine if every Final Fantasy game going forward controlled like this. I got every weapon. I wanted to play every DLC, and they didn't release all the DLC. Yay, so we didn't get the alternate ending. I'm not spoiling anything. But the fact that no character was safe from consequences was incredible. Everything felt... The tensions felt real in this game. The story felt great. The villains were really likable. And I was never fully sure what was going on until it came together at the end for some of the coolest fucking final fight ever. Has one of the coolest sequences in a game I've ever played. Love the car. Love all the characters. Love cruising around. Love being able to just listen to the radio as my characters talk about random shit and Prompto asked for 30,000 times to take a photo at a random landmark. My... Gosh, what a good game. The only reason I'm not going to talk about this one a ton is because I don't want to spoil anything. Just... God, it's such a good game. And I'm so excited for the next Final Fantasy. Just listen to the song. How can this not be hot? <clears throat> yeah, Ethan, uh, to clarify, I'd forgotten I'd played this until today. And then I remembered that it was January, February of this year. I need to watch King's Blood, dude. You can, uh... You can go and check as well, by the way. So... Let me show this. I'm proving something. This was where I... This was how I learned. I had played this this year. This was the year that I played most of it. This is my Steam year in a review. And there you can see Final Fantasy XV! What a great ending. What a great story. What a great soundtrack. I'm watching the fight that this music goes to, and it's it seriously is one of the uh, one of the coolest like Sequences. I don't even have to say fight. It's one of the coolest sequences in a game I've ever played. And you get to play it. Like, it's not a cutscene. Brad. Uh. Yeah. I have the achievements for, um, beating the game in January. <laughs> Yay! 
you're right, you don't fight crocodiles in this. Actually, I think you do. They're just not like crocodile crocodiles. It's just like random enemies. <laughs> So, I'm sure this was a conclusion no one was expecting, including myself, considering this was changed an hour to two before the stream. So what'd you guys think? It's true. But I do like them just in general, Final Fantasy. What'd you guys think of this year's uh, Game Awards? This was them. Solid diagrams. I, uh, I'd say for like pre on the fly, those got my point across. This has definitely been, um, one of the longest, uh, One of the longest of the Game Awards streams. This beats last year's by an hour. But we're not exactly done. Because... I have a little, I have a little announcement that I want to do. And... It's a pretty cool one, I like to think. Face reveal? No, I don't have a webcam. Uh, so, in recognition of hitting more channel growth in the last month than I have in the last two years, uh, two streams I am promising. I'm promising two streams. Three, technically. One, the yearly Metal Gear Rising speedrun will happen. Uh, so look forward to that. It should happen within the first month Jan of the year. I was going to say first month of January. Now, I wouldn't get too excited because the other two streams might be way cooler. As recognition for how much channel growth we've received, I want to do something really cool and continue that growth. So as thanks for almost 20 followers this month, pretty much, I I'm going to do a 24-hour stream again. No official date on that, but it should happen shortly after New Year. Uh... And then lastly... Lastly, in a very similar vein to the 24-hour stream, we are going to do a... Well, those don't help me, John. Energy drinks don't work. We're going to do a follower-a-thon. Follow-a-thon. A stream with a set duration... And every single follow I get, and 
every single sub I get during that stream will add to the total time I have to stream. Which could very, very easily make that stream go over 24 hours, if done well. I haven't worked out the exact details, I just know that I'm going to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm glad you guys are able to join for this year's Game Awards. I hope the announcements were neat. And, uh,. Yeah. This this VOD will be uploaded to YouTube. And with that, 